Thank you, Scott. It's uh, 16 minutes before 8 on CBC Radio 1. JaneandFinch.com is a website. Gives voice and platform to young kids in this city. Mark Sims helped with that project from the very beginning before he left Toronto for Western Canada. Mark is now a youth corrections officer in Regina, where he works with many First Nations youth. And later on this morning, he will receive a Governor General's Award for his volunteer work, both here in Toronto and in Regina. Mark is in Ottawa, where he will attend the Citizenship Award Ceremony, and he joins us now. Mark, good morning. Good morning. Congratula- How are you doing? Congratulations. Thank you. Um, what does getting an award like this uh, for the work that you have done um, mean to you? You know, it. Uh, we've put a lot of uh, our, our personal time into helping a lot of the youth in our neighborhood, and you know, with the thing with volunteers that you don't really see the uh, the payback a lot of the times until later on in life, and so uh, a lot of the volunteer work that we did mm. in, the, in the last like. 10, 15 years, we're seeing a lot of those youth come back now thanking us and telling us, you know, positive, great stories of things that they've done in their life. That's nice. I mean, it, 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 it really does show that the work that you put in and the time you put in has paid off. Yeah. You've done that work here, as I mentioned, and also uh, in Regina. Why did you, you have deep roots uh, in Jane and Finch. Why did you decide yes. to uh, uproot and head west? Um, well, for the most part, it was just for work opportunities. Um, but, uh, also like I, I learned a lot just being over there, just seeing the differences that a lot of the, uh, um, native youth over there are facing in comparison to some of the, the troubles that that the youth in Jane and Finch face or even just in urban Toronto area. Tell me a bit about the, the, what you saw in terms of connections. We, We know, um, that in this country, um, black, uh, and indigenous people are overrepresented. Uh, both of them within uh, the prison system. Mm-hmm. Do you see overlap between uh, those two groups in the work that you do? Yeah, I do actually. I mean, I I see a lot of overlap happening, but um, I think like the most part though is that uh, is that in both cities, a lot of people are, are are stepping up and becoming leaders and helping, and you're seeing a lot of that positivity show show through a lot of the youth and especially in Regina as well. Tell me a bit more about what you see. You're a youth corrections officer, so you'd see from the ground level um, yeah. what's going on with those young people. What are you seeing when it comes to particularly indigenous young people in Regina? Uh, you know, a lot of them are facing like uh, drug problems. Like I noticed the uh, one difference, especially uh, between the youth in Regina and Toronto is that the, a lot of youth in Toronto seem to be more in like uh, guns and gangs where a lot of the youth in Regina are struggling with a lot of like drugs you know and uh, and, and I see a lot of the, uh, the volunteers are actually recognizing these things and I think a lot of in the past a lot of uh, volunteers were mainly focused on making profit for their organizations mm. whereas now I see them more like grassroots organizations popping up people who actually do care and want to help it's something I never really seen seen in the past. How has living in, in Regina um, affected the way or changed the way you think about race and, and racism? Uh, you know, um, well, one story I can tell you, something that happened to me about uh, two years ago. It was actually a day after Christmas. Hmm. I was coming out of Safeway Grocery, Safeway Grocery Store, and uh, it was the morning time, and someone was driving by, and I, I heard them yelling the n-word to me and this happened in regina out of all places uh-huh. and uh they were saying it in that uh that southern southern accent the way they were calling my i'm saying the n-word mm-hmm. so i said you know what maybe i can actually go and catch these guys and i was like maybe not but let me just try so i hopped in the car and i was driving person in front of me actually sped up so it gave me an opportunity to catch up to these guys so eventually I caught up to them at a red light and I, uh, I came out the car and I remember looking at them and they were looking at me as like, they were shocked. They were just, they couldn't believe I was actually there with them because it was like maybe 10 minutes yeah. since they called me that word. So they thought I was long gone and uh, I felt like smashing their car and pulling them out the car. But I was like, you know what? I, I want to reach these guys and I want them to understand where I'm coming from. I want them to hear me. And the first thing that came to my mind was to tell them that I love them because I realized that, that 
if something ever happened to them, I would help them, regardless if they were racist or not. And I want them to realize that uh, that the value of people was more important than the color of their skin. How did they react? I mean, first, the EE caught up to them, um, but yeah. then you're the guy that they called the N-word in this southern, you know, slangy yeah. accent, um, and you don't, as you said, smash the car and grab them out. You tell them you love them. How did they react? They were quiet. Uh, they, they, they said nothing. Uh, I just seen one of the passenger, he was kind of like nodding his head a bit, I guess in agreement. But uh, they they said nothing. They just had shame on their face. I uh, I didn't want to look like the crazy guy out there kicking someone's car, because to someone else, it's not going to look like it's, they're not going to see my story. They're just going to see me angry hitting someone's car, and it's just going to prove their point even more. So I said, you know what? I'm just not. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to, and I don't want that hate on my heart as well, right? I mean, what? they have that, but I don't want it. What's, the, what's, what's the lesson in that? Because I think a lot of people wouldn't respond that way, if, if we're honest. You know, it's, it, it, uh, that's true. A lot of people wouldn't respond that way. But uh, the thing is that usually the way people respond is just by yelling and screaming or, or cussing. But we do have to have a dialogue with these people. I mean, if, if they feel that way, I think we, we should be talking with them instead of just yelling at them, covering our ears and our eyes and acting like it ain't happening. Because it is. I mean, we have this cancel culture now where people say something and we have to shut them up. Mm. But we should be encouraging them to speak because we don't want to be brushing things under the carpet. Is, is that uh, the message? Just, is that the approach and the, and the message you bring, not just mm -hmm. to the work that you're doing, but to the volunteer work? This is, mm -hmm. the, And that's what you're going to be getting your award for later on this morning? Is that is that what you bring to that work? Right. Yeah. I mean, a volunteer is just, you know, it's... it's it's so important to see for people to see you doing something mm. without you know asking for money in return you know even just like uh like the kids out there you you're always i'm always really surprised at uh who's watching you know and uh it's just always important to to give your time to other people if you can you're a good model for those kids, um, and you are well-deserving of uh, this award that you'll get later on this morning. Mark, it's great to talk to you. Thank you. Congratulations again. Mark Thank Sims you. is one of the 40 people being honored with a Governor General Citizenship Award later on this morning for his volunteer work in Toronto and Regina. One of the people who was uh, deeply involved uh, right from the very beginning of a great website called uh, janefinch.com, and he's now working in Regina. It's 8 before 8. Suresh is next.